Hello everyone, welcome to another video of me, Warner and Street, with another video of Weekly Andrew, in which I'm just going to just get straight into talking about anime like I normally do, basically. So, starting off with Tagaki sign. Um, yeah. Nishikata, as expected, ends up being the prince by the end of the play. So, nothing surprising there, to be honest. Don't know if it was really intentional or not, but from Kimura doing that. Probably wasn't, but once it got to it, he went to be the best wingman like he normally is, pretty much. Getting Nisha to take the role instead. But, yeah. This season, in all honesty, Tagaki-san is seriously going all out against Nishika san With all the teasing and dropping hints that she likes him. Seriously, she's going all out on that. But, yeah. Don't exactly have that much else to really say here for Tugaki-san. So, moving on to my dress-up darling. In which Marin has fallen heads over heels in love with Gojo. Over the single line that he said. At the end of the previous video, right before he ended up falling asleep. So he was basically half awake when he actually said it. Saying that she was beautiful. So, yeah, she's fallen in love with Gojo at this point. And also, Gojo's grandfather finally actually knows what's been going on. With the cosplay and everything. And on top of all that, Gojo and his grandpa basically invite Marin to eat, eat dinner with them more often after learning... How poorly she's been eating, basically. But besides all that, kind of the main thing for the episode, I guess, was the new girl, Juju. Another cosplayer, which stalked Gojo. Oh, just get him to make a cosplay for him. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm not going to mention anything else that really happened there when it comes to Juju. So, moving on to Demon Slayer, which is now finished the Entertainment District arc, in which I think we now have to wait like a year and a half or something until we get the next arc, I think. So, yeah. Apparently Nezuko's demon blood art can destroy the demon's poison or whatever is going on there. Tengen's retiring as a Hashira at this point. Which, to be honest, is a pretty smart move from him. Considering, yeah, I don't think he's really going to be surviving any more fights at this point. Especially in the condition he's currently in. But, so looking at the story and how things are going. If the, our three main characters are everything. Tanjiro, Zenetsu, and Inosuke. End up becoming Kashiras. We're going to need to, need to have at least one more Hashira. To die or retire at this point. And there would be four if Nezuko ends up becoming a Hashira, if that's actually possible. So, yeah. We're going to have to lose at least one more Hashira for that. Or possibly two for Nezuko. So, yeah. That's kind of anime done for this point. At this point for this week. Because I honestly don't really... I have that much to talk about when it comes to anime for this season altogether. Because it's kind of been slightly disappointing, to be honest. But, moving on to the one game I actually got myself around to really playing. That I will talk about at least. Which is Lessons in Love. Which finally got its update after being delayed for like a month and a half at the very least. Because of Patreon. So... This update was Chika, Yumi, Sarah, and Yuki, along with one happy event. So, of course, Chika and Yumi, being main characters, got four events, while Sarah and Yuki, being side characters, got two. And then there's also the one happy event that we got. So, kind of going in order of the events I did them in. First off, Yuki, in which Yumi... Finally actually talks to her mother for once. But of course it ends up just being the two of them arguing. And at the end of the event. Having 
Yumi basically gives Sensei a chance to take advantage of her while she's weak. And by some miracle, Sensei actually has some self-control for once. Despite blacking out as well. Seriously, that's honestly quite an achievement, I think, for Sensei. But that there was basically Yumi's stuff done. So moving on to Yumi. So that was more or less Yuki's events done at this point. So moving on to Yumi. In which we're basically doing more job hunting with her. But this time we go to Makoto's home. Which, if you know this game at all, is a porn shop. So yeah. I think you may almost mask a job there before backing out. So, hey, she almost got a job for once. And also the final event for Yumi, she finally actually apologizes to Futaba. Which is honestly quite a bit of character development. Uh, she's actually finally gotten to the point where she actually is apologizing for basically bullying Futaba all the time. So, yeah, character development, yay! So, now, moving on to Sarah's events, in which we basically kind of interrupt family time between her and Santa, and also once Santa leaves, of course, we kind of have more talk more to Sarah, or she talks to Sensei, considering Sensei doesn't really do that much talking, I think, if I remember correctly, but yeah. Learn more about her past, and the most noteworthy thing about that is the fact that she apparently had very bad parents. So, yeah. Right at the end of that event as well, we see this random girl, and I have no idea who it is, so seriously, who in the world is this random girl that we see at the end of that event? Seriously, who is it? But now, moving on to Chica with her four events. Which overall is mainly just getting Chica to slow things down. Which is quite heavily helped by her having sex with Sensei. Hey, and almost getting caught by Chinami. Her little sister. So, yeah. I also think that eight scene there was maybe the first one. That's not a part of a lust event, I think. Seriously, I don't exactly remember considering... I started playing this game months ago, so I'm not exactly sure about all this. But I think this might have been the first eight scene that was in a, in a lust event, I think. If it's not, it's probably the second or third one. I think. But, yeah, that's all the character events done, so... Happy events! Now, it's the only thing I really have that much, self, that much to actually say here is... From what I can tell, this happy event and maybe a few others that we've actually seen are fragments of Sensei's memories, I think. That's my current guess to what some of the happy events are at the very least. And also, I kind of think this lottery number that we're seeing here is probably going to be a bit important at some point. Just so, considering how the developers kind of got to when it comes to happy events, due to players just completely skipping over the happy events. Because they are scary. Seriously. They're not scary. At all. Maybe just the first few happy events? Maybe? But other than that, there's really not nothing bad going on there. The first few are just very detailed, I guess I'd say. With how much... Yeah, I really want to say that much about that, considering... Yeah, I didn't really like it that much myself, considering how detailed it was about some of the stuff going on there. So, yeah. That's basically Lessons in Love done here, and I think we're actually getting close for, to the next update being released, so might actually be released next week, I think? May? Maybe? I'm not exactly sure. And if it does, I probably won't text about to get around to actually playing it either. So, yeah. As last week, I also still haven't um, gotten around to playing Ripples, though I have actually updated it at this point, so I can actually now play the newest update for it. 
Now, besides all that, the other stuff that I've kind of done this week is Command to Conquer Generals, on Zero Hour, of course. Decide to do some testing with that and see if I can get it to work on the computer now. In which I first ran into a problem where once I block opens the game, all the shortcuts I have on my second monitor basically just disappeared and went onto my main monitor for some reason. No idea why, but after messing around and everything and trying to figure stuff out, I kind of looked at the options.i in a I file and noticed the resolution setting there, which the default Max resolution in the game is 1280 by 960, so I decided to just manually change that to 1920 by 1080, which right, so now the monitor resolution the monitor I now have. So once I did that and opened the game, the problem with the shortcuts for some reason going over to my main monitor was fixed. But now at this point I have another problem, in which is if I click off onto the other monitor, even just off the game at all, twice while the game is running, it crashes. So if I want to actually do anything at all when I'm playing the game, I'm going to have to constantly be restarting it, basically. So, whenever I'm playing Command Conquer Generals or Zero Hour, I'm going to have to make sure I just pay attention to the game and leave anything else I'm constantly possibly doing between missions or battles or whatever. Because otherwise I'm going to have to constantly be saving and restarting the game. Because the darn thing will be crashing constantly. But yeah. Don't know how exactly to fix that problem, but I'm not exactly that interested in it right now. So besides that, I've honestly been spending quite a bit of time this week playing games. Now that I actually have a computer that can actually handle playing games. The uh, main thing I've honestly been playing this week is World of Warships. I did some World of Tanks, but mainly World of Warships and actually kind of just starting, to be honest. Considering I only had, like, up to St. Louis or something for the U.S. tech tree and that's it. So, yeah. More or less just starting off when it comes to actually playing the game still. Despite having an account for a few years at this point and having good rewards for that. So, yeah. I've honestly been doing surprisingly well, I think. Considering, like, 68% victory rates currently. And also kind of seems like I'm finishing top of the team in every single battle. But I think that's probably just due to the fact that North America server, half the team on both sides are AI. Some, and if every now and then I even get battles where it's literally just AI, and I'm the only player in the battle. Seriously. I also did start playing aircraft carriers a bit there to try and grind those. So, of course, Langley playing that, and yeah, not doing very well, because I'm just not used to doubt to play them. So, yeah. I think I did slightly better in the last battle I played, but yeah. That battle was mainly carried by the one other player on my team. Well, I just kind of finished off enemies that were on the other side of the map from it. So, yeah. Besides that, I've played other games like Hero Truck Simulator 2. Um, yeah. Really haven't done much else besides that, to be honest. But one thing I've definitely been doing this quite a bit this week is watching live streams. Especially one single VTuber that I've been watching for like two days now, which is Shy Lily. Just randomly decides to jump into our stream, and I've kind of been there since. Yeah. And somehow, like, the entire two days I've been in the stream, during the subathon, I haven't gotten a single subscription from any of the probably, like, thousand or two thousand gifted subscriptions. Yeah. Something that I've kind of noticed in all my time on Twitch is I am very good at dodging subs. Seriously. There's only like one point back in 2020, like one month period back in 2020, where that was not really true very much, considering how many subs I ended up getting back then. But yeah, I am very good at dodging subscri 
sub bombs for some reason. Don't know why, but I am. But yeah. Uh, I think that there will be the end of this video, so I hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.